In this video I'll cover how to create your own custom hatch patterns for Revit um, or AutoCAD. Um, hatch patterns are created using what are called PAT files. PAT files are just text files that give Revit the directions on how to draw the pattern. Um, there are just a few simple rules to follow to create these patterns, um, but they can get as complicated uh, as you want to make them to be. But before I dive in how to create these uh, PAT files, um, sometimes all you need is a very simple hatch pattern, and simple hatch patterns can actually be created right out of Revit without even uh, diving into anything else. So briefly to cover that, if you need just a simple pattern, such as parallel lines or just a crosshatch, uh, you can do that by um, first creating a new material. So I'll go to the Manage tab, choose Materials. Under the Materials list, I'll go ahead and start out with a default material selected in the list and just uh, duplicate it to make a copy of it. From the bottom left corner, choose the Duplicate button. It looks like two little pages. From here, give it a name. Uh, let's say, for example, I just want to create a two foot by four foot tile. So I'll just call this um, pattern uh, two by four. In, uh, or this material two by four tile, excuse me. So tile two by four. Hit OK. Um, now that I have selected and created a new material, uh, on the right hand side you'll see a pull down menu for surface patterns. Uh, you can click on the list and assuming for a moment that we don't have a pattern that meets our needs we can create this simple crosshatch pattern by clicking the radio button next to the pull down menu. Clicking on that uh, brings up our fill patterns and here uh, again assuming uh, we don't have what we need we'll create a new one by using the new button um, and you'll notice at the bottom of the window is pattern type. Uh, you can either choose drafting or model and what this means is a model pattern is actual dimensions and will always stay that dimension. So that's exactly what we need for something like a tile or a brick. A two foot by four foot pattern will always be a two foot by four foot pattern. As opposed to a drafting type pattern changes with the scale. Um, and that would be more appropriate for say a crosshatch pattern of plywood or insulation or something. So since uh, this pattern, the spacing of the pattern always needs to be the same, two foot by four foot, the pattern type needs to be a model type. So I'll click model, and then to create a new pattern, I'll choose new. Here um, it opens up a uh, new window to create the pattern. And what we're creating is just a simple pattern. So. Um, for a simple pattern, uh, all you really have for options is you can create parallel lines or you can create uh, crosshatch lines and then you can uh, designate the spacing between. So I'll give the pattern a name, so I'll call it 2 by 4 Clicking on simple, we'll go down to the line angle. Instead of this 45 degree diagonal, I'll change it to 0, so this gives me a hor horizontal pattern. Uh, and then the, make the spacing to be two feet. And instead of parallel lines, we need a crosshatch. And the spacing for the other lines can be four feet. Uh, and click OK, and that's all. Um, once you've created a pattern, you'll click OK, and now just make sure you choose the pattern that you've created for your material. Uh, the process for choosing a pattern for its cut is exactly the same. You'll notice that for cut patterns, uh, you probably won't have the choice of choosing a model pattern. Uh, cut patterns will only be drafting uh, style patterns. Okay, so now that I've got um, how to create simple hatch patterns out of the way, uh, now I'll dive into uh, creating much more complicated patterns um, that you can't create right out of Revit. For that, um, you need to create this text file called a PAT file. and uh, to help you out, um, it's really helpful to have a grid paper and a pencil to sketch out the pattern that you want to create. So I've, I've kind of recreated that uh, here. Um, I've created kind of a grid with uh, X and Y grid. 
and um, the the increments for your grid are going to be your your default increments um, for your project. In this case, it's inches. Inches are the default measure um, for uh, um, OPN projects. So um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch out the pattern I want. And in this case, uh, let's assume we're going to make a 4 inch by 12 inch uh, running bond brick. So just a running bond utility brick pattern. So what that means is using my uh, line tool um, or your pencil, a brick pattern is uh, really consists of two different repeating line patterns. It's going to be horizontal lines so these are our um, horizontal lines spaced four inches apart and then um, there are going to be dashed lines um, kind of breaking up the brick uh, vertically. So here uh, you can see um, I've overlaid these uh, parallel lines spaced at four inches with these uh, dash lines coming across vertically. So the trick is to tell Revit um, how to create this pattern by just using a series of repeated lines. So um, using your grid paper and a pencil you need to um, sketch out a pattern and then figure out how to break that into a series of patterns. Uh, this is how every pattern is uh, created with a PAT file. Even if I go to a very complicated pattern, uh, very complicated pattern like this uh, gravel pattern, um, if I zoom in, you see that all it is is it's just a series of repeating lines, um, all at different angles and different spacing from each other to create these um, these shapes. So going back to uh, my grid, I'll go ahead and hide my uh, vertical lines. And um, I'll, I'll break down the uh, directions you're going to input uh, to tell Revit how to create these lines. So um, for Revit, uh, this pattern is uh, the series of these numbers. Um, these numbers are going to be a line in a text file, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute. But what these numbers are telling you is the first number, 0, is degrees from horizontal. So that's telling you it's a flat line. It's not vertical. Second number is um, your starting point in the x direction. Third number is your starting point in the y direction. Fourth number is your shift. And what that means is as these lines repeat up from each other, as they're offset from each other, the shift is how they want to shift from left to right. So if you had a shift value, um, these lines would start to stair step. They would start to shift away from each other as they're repeated up. Finally is your offset. This is uh, your spacing apart from each other. Four means four units, um, so these lines are four inches apart. Now your next line is just going to be another text line in your text file, your PAT file. The next line tells Revit how to lay down the second pattern of lines. In this case, uh, these are vertical lines, so they're shifted 90 degrees. Um, again, we'll start uh, at the x origin at 0 and y origin at 0. So we'll start in this corner. Next is their shift. So, so uh, the shift in this case means since these lines are started are vertical, they're starting from this axis. As they come out, they're shifting from left to right in this direction. So they're shifting. So as these lines get laid out, the next pattern of lines get shifted over four inches. The next line now um, is the offset. In this case, six inches. These lines are um, six inches away from each other, again, from the y-axis, because they've been rotated. Finally, there's a couple extra lines in here. That's because instead of solid lines, um, this pattern of lines, these are dashed. So think, think of this as one continuous line that's dashed, and one continuous line that's dashed, and so on. So to create a dashed line rather than a solid, 
um, you give it a value for the line length, in this case four inches, and then a four inch space, and then it repeats, so another four inches, and so on. So what you've ended up with to create these two series of pattern lines are these two lines of text. So ultimately what you're going to put in a text file to create a PAT file is going to look something like this. Uh, all together, uh, the text file will include a name for the file, and then you're going to tell Revit using this line that it's either a model or a drafting pattern, and then you're simply going to add your line patterns to create your pattern. And you can add as many lines as you need to. So for this utility running bond brick, it's our first line and then our second line. And that's the breakdown. And so finally what you're going to end up with is in Notepad, you're going to create the text file and you're just going to type out the lines that look like this. That's all there is to creating the file. Um, obviously it will take some practice uh, to get the results you want, um, but uh, ultimately these are uh, really just the basic rules for creating this. So when you're finished with creating your text file, um, by default the Notepad will save it as a .txt. You just need to replace that extension name with .pat. Once you do that, um, to create your new material now, you're going to go to your materials. Um, I'll create a duplicate from a default. Hit duplicate, give it a new name. And for a surface pattern, I'll click the radio button. Make sure I choose in pattern type before I click new, hit model, because we're going to create a model pattern. Click new. This time, instead of simple, hit custom. Give it a name. And then click import uh, to choose your file. Browse and find your PAT file.